This time we're going to do a little bit close up showing how to approach the bark and give more detail to it as well. So come along, let's see how we do that this time and hopefully you'll find it interesting as well. Here I'm putting in a rough outline of what I'm going to paint the stump in this situation. And then I will wet my board behind that so I can paint in the smooth areas. You don't want the board to be too wet, let it get to a low sheen dampness. Then lay in your light areas, then your dark areas. This is going to be grass behind there. Then I start to paint the stump itself to give the information. Starting with light, painting in the darks. And I'm doing it sort of quickly and roughly to allow for that variation of tone and information to be my foundation as I paint. And even as I put in the top of the stump there, I'm putting my lights and then I'll put in a little bit of shadowing tone. And now I come back and use the acetate that you've seen me do in other videos to lay in my information. Notice I had the little white, that was an accident but you can still work with little incidents or accidents. Then I put in some of my directional strokes, the curvature lines there to give me information for the bark, and then I'm giving, giving you some of the darker shadow areas that will break the bark up. At this moment, I'm going back to the grass, pulling my light areas into those shadow areas so you can see some of the grass blades and then I'll pull some of the dark areas into the light areas. This simulates the grass without getting every single grass blade detail happening. It is a quicker method of simulating grass. So painting in the lighter portions of it. Pulling some of those darker into the lighter. Now I'm giving a few shadow spots of grass, not a lot of them, over areas that could have used a little bit of extra information. Now I'm putting, pulling some of the lights, even lighter, to stand out as more individual blades. And then I'm putting in my shadowing, pulling that in. Going back to the stump, I'm bringing in details, lines that will form the bark of the tree stump, giving some shadows, giving lines again that will help it stand out from the, the actual wood inside it, building dimension, just small little lines here and there that will create some shadow areas. That's what those lines represent, some of the more shadow spots. Now I'm giving some of the age lines, rings inside the wood, and I'm going to put some cracks as well, showing that the wood has aged. And I'm doing that with shadowing first, so the dark areas. This is where I'm building the texture of that bark. And then I come back and put edges of light, where the light coming from the left-hand side in this case, and hitting those edges to help pull it and give it dimension, pull it forward. And this is what's helping define more of the texturing. Little light spots. So again, I always think of things as one, two, three. That middle tone, then the dark tones, and then those light tones. It's the simplest way to think of things, to give form and dimension. Middle tone, dark tones, light tones. Now, it may not always be in that order, of course. Sometimes it's the light tones, dark tones, middle tones. But the idea is the one, two, three, simple process. And that's what you're seeing me build the process, giving more light to pull out those shapes, that broken bark look. Even in the shadows, it won't be as light as it is in the lighter areas, but you want toned down light in order to build the information.
Now, even on the top of the wood, I'm putting in where the light catches the edge of the cracked portions of the wood. And that's what helps it to stand out, give it more form. Pull out a few more grass blades. Those that will be the accent lights. And the accents is what give you final information to make it look like, oh yeah, there's grass here. A little more of the foreground accents. And when I'm completed with this, We'll get a close-up look to see what a detail line looks like. And you can add more information to this, more texturing to make it really busy if you want. Or you can keep it even simpler than this. It can maybe appear more cartoony. But this is the final effect or look when working those different layers of lights, little tone and shadows. Well, what did you think? I hope you found that interesting. Subscribe, check out my other videos, and give me an idea of what you would like to see me paint as well. Hopefully we'll see you next time.